Good morning, guys. I can't even describe how hot it is in this camper right now. Holy crap, I'm just sweating. Oh my god. If you guys can see that or not, but you guys see that? It's 112 degrees in here. I mean, like, it is hot, man. Holy. Whew. Hopefully it's not like melting the stove rubber up there. Oh, it's about 4.15 in the morning right now. Apparently this is still charging, I don't know how. Let's put the big boy back on it. Hope he's gonna start this morning. Pretty sure all that leakage right there is from the diesel um, that was just spilling all over the top of the engine. And I took the fuel filter out yesterday right there. Yeah, when I pushed the fuel filter back in, there's just a bunch of diesel getting around. I need to change that fuel filter, but hopefully it'll just start without changing it. Hopefully it's thought out. You should see how warm it feels. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. Oh. Pretty much get ready here in a few minutes and fire it up. Oh God, it's so hot up here. Oh. It's literally as hot as being at Burning Man. Oh, it's hot in this camper. All right, getting out of here, I hope. It was 112 degrees in here. Turn on my coolant heater anyway, just for a few minutes in here. So it's been off for 20 minutes, so it should be plenty warm enough. Turn it off. Let's get ready because this thing is gonna fill this place up with diesel exhaust. If it fires up, it's gonna be nasty probably. Probably gonna run really rough for a second. Let's turn this bad boy off. You guys ready? This is the moment. Good God, I hope it starts. If it doesn't, I don't even know what to do. All right, old girl. I know you can. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fire up. The glow plug cycle a couple times here. I don't think the glow plug relay is working. I just noticed the wait to start turns off super fast, but all right, let's give her a go. Ready? Good. Oh, something's wrong. Let's give her a last shot of ether. <laughs> I want to, but don't really want to, but we're gonna get Oh, she don't like that. That was a shot of ether in there, but. Your shot, and no, we're not doing that anymore. Come on, old girl. Think we're going? Yeah, something seems weird. It only started with ether, so I don't like that. I'm gonna leave it running. Let me get out of here, though. I'm gonna fill that place up with diesel exhaust. Park over here. All right, guys, freaking stoked it fired up. Barely started. Look how hot it is in here. It's 102 degrees 
in this camper right now. If you can believe that. I am not shutting this truck off the rest of the trip. I'm like, that's it. It's, I'm gonna leave it running, so that's what we're doing. I'm not gonna do it now, but I'm gonna change that fuel filter for sure. Ooh, it's cold. Let's roll. I'm a little bit nervous though because my power steering line, although it did not blow out, there's a lot of fluid, so that's really suspect. So if that blows out, I have to shut my engine down to change the power steering hose, the line. So um, that could be an issue. I don't wanna shut the truck down. So I'm gonna decide what to do this morning. And uh, it sounds insane, but I open up the door and crank the fan so it's blowing hot air out. Um, I'm doing that. I need to get this super hot air out of here because I want this heater to turn on. I do not want my Webasto heater like not having to turn on for 30 minutes or something and freezing back there. And then I'm really screwed. So I'm gonna try to get this heat out of here really quick. Oh well, guys, it's cooling down in here. It's down to about 77 degrees. So I'm gonna leave the door open just a little bit longer. That way that heater, Webasto heater kicks on. And uh, I mean, now that we're out of there, I can start a fire. So I'm not worried about that. But uh, I think the first thing we're gonna do is go back to O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I gotta return these battery cores, um, these old batteries from my truck, and get some money back for those. And, uh, and maybe get some coffee and a breakfast burrito or something when the stand opens. And I'll make my decision what I'm gonna do. But this truck, I'm telling you right now, I'm not turning this truck off for probably five or six days. I'm just gonna leave it running. So that's the plan. I just hope that power steering line's all right. Okay, here we go. She's running fine. I mean, I was running like a top when I shut it down, so I don't know. I'm not leaking a bunch of fluid, so. All right, man. I don't know. Get some lights on. Got O'Reilly's typed in. Head west on Stirrup Avenue toward South Lathrop Street. O'Reilly Auto Parts may be closed by the time you arrive. Yeah, I get like two hours before they open, a little over two hours, but let's roll. Put this Hydro Tune ship back down to. Normal setting. Man, I am so thankful. Helped me out last night like that. That was awesome. Really appreciate it, Evan, dude. Couple moose right there, you guys see. Well, we have arrived at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. So, we got about two hours till they open, so I'm gonna go in the back of the camper, and I'm not turning this truck off. How about that? Let it idle. Let me do a stock idle. Since it's still like 5.30 in the morning, I'm gonna lay down in a couple more minutes. I'm still tired, so see you guys in a couple hours here. All right, you guys know me. For some crazy reason, I've decided to continue on. So we're gonna go into O'Reilly's and return these two batteries. I'm gonna pick up some stuff. I'm gonna get a spare fuel filter, just in case. Um, some power steering fluid, or transmission fluid for a Ford, just in case, and uh, some other stuff just to be safe. And I'm not shutting this truck off the rest of the trip. Here we go. Sweet, there's Napa Auto Parts. Uh, no, I should be all right. Save you one. Awesome, thank you, appreciate it. You too. My boyfriend and I watch your channel a lot. Oh, right on. And I was like, yeah. there's no way he's right here. Yeah, I know, I'm just passing through town, or trying to pass through town, yeah. but it was like broke down last night, so. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah thank It's been crazy for a while. Well, best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Take it easy. All right, man, they had it all. New fuel filter. Automatic transmission fluid. I can't even hold it all in. They had everything. Look at all this stuff. It's like Christmas. Oh, it's like a cold weather Christmas. Get some extra 911. We're good, man. Let's roll. And all the irony 
the uh, fuel filter light is not on right now, but it's just flickering on and off. Um, luckily, I'm still right here in Fairbanks, so I think I get a bad fuel filter, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that. This thing was freaking 80 bucks, but I'll put this new one in there, and then I need to go get another one as a spare. And uh, hopefully that'll solve the problem, but that means I'm gonna cut this engine off. So, I hope it works. Hope I can fire it back up. Here we go. I tried to park in a place where I can get towed real easy if I have to. All right, I'm terrified, but here we go. We're cutting it off. <laughs> I have to change the fuel filter though, so I've got to turn it off. I'm in town, so this is a safe place to kill it, so. All right, she's off. Let's get this thing changed quick. Okay, let's hustle. Okay. There's my fuel filter. Use this wrench to get it off here. There it goes. Oh yeah, I get that. I definitely need a new filter. Holy crap. Dirty. Lubricate this brand new nice clean filter. the keys a couple times so the fuel bowl filter will fill up with diesel. Well, the engine should be good and warm. All right, here we go. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Since I've got to run the diesel for uh, probably five days straight, and I'm gonna be sleeping in the back. I don't want exhaust fumes getting in the camper, and if they do, I wanna know if there's gas in there, carbon monoxide, whatever. I need to go get a gas alarm, so we're gonna go do that real quick. All right, we're in business. When I get some fuel, grab some coffee and a burrito and hitting the road. How's it going, man? How you doing? Sorry, I had to come and take Oh yeah, no, it's all good. I'm just subscribed to your channel. It's pretty cool. Oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, man. Nice to get to see it in person. Yeah, just heading north right now. We're yeah. trying to. That's funny. There's the gas station clerk came out, and uh, I guess he's a subscriber. He watches the channels. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Get to talk to him for a second while I was filling up. And I don't know if I told you guys yet, but I brought my snowboard and I would love to do some snowboarding up in Adigan Pass. So probably gonna be changing over into my super winter clothes, my big down puffy jackets and all that kind of stuff when I get up that way. We're rolling. I'm actually gonna stop by the other Napa and go pick up one spare fuel filter so I get an extra one. I just got a Napa Gold filter. Just had another subscriber stop by and say hi. I saw the truck while I was in Napa there. Pretty cool. But anyway, we're on our way to the Arctic we go. What could happen? <laughs> uh, I'm feeling better about it now. Feeling all right. I'm just gonna leave the truck running. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna shut it off. But I did shut it off and it fired back up. So that was pretty confidence inspiring. So, I don't know. I think my fuel filter just got frozen and uh, wasn't pulling anything through, so. We're in downtown Fairbanks, my friends, and we are heading north. Looks we're going right here. From Alaska to west. It is going. Yeah, I do a hot one. You guys still doing uh, breakfast burritos? Um, not at the moment. We have breakfast okay, sandwiches. I've got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that. That'd be fine. Okay, I'll charge you All right, appreciate it. Oops. 
Yeah. Let's go in. You want to use one on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Or TikTok? Yeah. What? Yeah, I yeah, Timmy. Huh? Yeah, Timmy. Eileen. Eileen, good to meet you. Yes, I saw you. I said, I know. I seen him on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, I'm just passing through right now. Yep. Yeah, I was like, I kind of like broke down last night, so oh, that was kind of crazy, oh. but yeah. I don't know. I, saw, I had to turn. I said, I oh, yeah. To head out. <laughs> no, it's all good. So, where, okay. are you all, where are you going now? I'm just up to the slope right now, so. Oh. Yeah, but it's freaking so cold. This thing wouldn't start last night. So it's like in a garage, but yeah. Now yeah, we'll see. I'm just gonna leave it running. I think I don't know. Hey, can yeah. I take a picture? Yeah, yeah go for it. Oh, so right on. Yeah, safe, safe travels wherever you wind up. Yeah, I'm gonna follow you. Okay. Right on. Right, take it yeah. easy. You drive safe. Okay? Yeah, you too. Yo. That worked. Thank you. I think we're good. That fuel filter light has not come back on. I'm still a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Mainly just because the temperatures, it's just so cold. But even if all of my machines fail, if everything I have fails, my wood stove will still work. I still have a wood stove and I've got plenty of firewood and I actually have extra sawdust logs for emergencies since there's no trees and stuff when you get up there. I can still stay warm and I still have a cabin. So I feel good about that. Also I have plenty of survival gear and I've got connections up the road. I got friends that work at uh, the DOT up near Adigan Pass. I've got a friend working on the slope, I believe now. So I've got a lot of contacts. I've got a satellite phone, and I know a couple people along the way that I could reach out to if stuff gets crazy. But uh, I think we're gonna be all right. I'm just gonna leave the truck running and go. Hey, thank you. Awesome, I appreciate it, guys. Day yeah, two. Off to cold foot we go. I think I've got about seven and a half, eight hour drive in the winter time like this is gonna be slower. So, and then we'll be in cold foot, which is the only place to fill up fuel with fuel on the entire highway until you get to Dead Horse. All right, see around the corner. Let's go. We're rolling. This is it. Let's do it. On our way to the Arctic. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing it again. The reason I wanted to do this drive is if you guys look back at my videos, maybe a month or so, you'll find out that I attempted this drive and I didn't make it. I had to turn around last time because of avalanches. And then when I turned around, I hit a caribou on the way back. Just all this crazy stuff happened. But uh, made it back safe. And uh, now I just want to reattempt it. Unfortunately, it is the coldest week of the year. So this is kind of cool. This is the pipeline right here. So this is where a lot of our oil comes from. I can't remember what the percentage is. I think it's 20% or close to it. That pipeline is running basically all the way to Valdez as far as I know. The sweet part is we're gonna be following this pipeline all the way up there. It's pretty neat. So it goes all the way up to Prudhoe Bay where all the oil is coming from. Pipeline is 800 miles long, 48 inch diameter. It's crazy, it's four foot diameter. Crosses more than 500 rivers and streams. Cost $8 billion to build it back in 1977. I don't know what that costs now. Construction began in March of 1975 and completed two years later. What, 1977? That's crazy. We're right there, kind of in the middle of the pipeline. You can see the you are here thing, and we're going all the way up to the top, up to Prudhoe Bay, out to the Arctic Ocean. Let's do it. Just our luck, winter weather advisory for cold foot tonight. Very cold wind chills to 55 below zero, negative 55. Snow and blowing snow with low visibility expected. Additional accumulation of four inches. Wind gusts as high as 35 miles an hour. Visibility to one half mile or less. Travel could be difficult. Areas of blowing snow reduce visibility. Snow drifts will form. Well, looks like we're in for some weather again. Lucky us. Let's go. I'm a little bit nervous because if you guys didn't notice, I got a brand new windshield since the last uh, Arctic drive a month ago. Did that just for you guys. Now we don't have to look at it the camera focusing on a crack in the window. So hopefully there's not a ton of gravel on the road so it doesn't get thrown up and hit the windshield. All right, y'all, this is the last fuel stop right here at Hilltop. So I'm gonna top her off one last time to be nice and extra full and then we're rolling. If you guys are ever driving by here too, they're supposed to have really good pie there and lunch and stuff like that. But I had it like 20 years ago, just can't remember. Anyway. Let's fill up. Let's 
Take a look at that. Proud Alaska's famous hilltop pies. I like driving in Crocs. Uh, you guys like Crocs? Say something in the comments if you wear Crocs. I freaking love Crocs. I like driving in them. They're just really comfortable to drive and your feet don't sweat at all and you just stay nice and cozy. That's what I drive with. Me and my dad actually did a uh, backcountry trip hiking through the Brooks Range up here, uh, pretty close to Colfoot and Wiseman. And uh, we had probably 70 pound packs, not super crazy, but pretty heavy and pack rafts and stuff. And uh, we did the entire hiking trip in Crocs. That's all we brought, those were our hiking shoes. It's because you can walk these streams and uh, you dry off instantly. But you can roll the crap out of your ankles too. Ooh, yeah, man, this road is icy this time. Freaking slick. It's, yeah, I'd be taking it pretty easy. I'm in no freaking hurry this time. I don't have a plane to catch or anything like that. The Dalton Highway is about 420 miles long, 425, something like that. That's one way, so it's basically 800 miles round trip. And uh, the Dalton Highway is not right here in Fairbanks. You have to drive way out in the middle of nowhere to even reach it. The big thing about this highway is if you're going to drive it any time of year, you have to be prepared because there's not a lot of help out here. There's only one service station halfway down the highway, 250 miles down the highway. And then it's another 250 miles to the next service station, which honestly is further than most trucks can go in a tank of fuel. So you have to bring extra fuel or have like two tanks like I've got or drive a car that gets good gas mileage. One thing this highway is notorious for is flat tires. You don't have to worry as much in the winter because the gravel is kind of covered up by ice and snow and kind of packed in. But uh, it's definitely a concern still because there's no help if something happens. Obviously the most important thing is being prepared. If you're gonna drive this in the winter, which no one really does except the truckers, you have to be prepared for a breakdown and have to be prepared to have no help for as much as a day at least while, while you're waiting for a truck to come or something like that. So yeah, you just have to be self-sufficient and just be prepared for anything out here. Well, we are approximately 20 minutes into the Dalton Highway, maybe less, and it is rough already. We don't get it though, we're just poking along. It's just gonna be a little slower, slower going this time. Yeah, I'm really excited. I've got some cool stuff to do this time with you guys up here besides just drive. So I definitely wanna get out the snowboard and get a lap in an Attica Pass and hike up. I also have this track bike sitting right there attached to the vehicle. My plan is to use that thing to get out to the Arctic Ocean is the game plan. So I'm gonna stop down south of Dead Horse a little bit. It's all oil lease lands up there, so you have to kind of go around the oil lease lands and then you can get out to the ocean just fine. So that's our plan and hopefully the weather isn't ridiculous when we get up there. Hopefully we hit a window right. Looks like there's gonna be some sunshine, a break in the weather in two more days up there. So as long as we get up there quick enough, then we should be able to make it out to the ocean. That's what I'm hoping for. So the crazy part about this drive is you can't actually drive your own vehicle to the Arctic Ocean. You get stopped in Dead Horse at a security gate at the end of the road and only the slope workers are allowed to drive in there. So you have to get off and take a tour bus out to the ocean, but the tour bus isn't even operating in the winters. It only operates in the summer for obvious reasons. So there's literally no way to get to the Arctic Ocean right now unless you do it on your own feet. And uh, even that's pretty crazy because it's about 30 miles to get to the ocean from the road if you go around all the oil lease lands and uh, go where you can legally go. So you could do it on foot, but it's a long ways and you wouldn't make it in one day. So that's what we're doing and hopefully that track bike will get us there. I'm also going to be preparing for that adventure just in case that bike breaks down for any reason. I've got a sled that I can put the track in and push the bike along and I'm bringing cross country skis so I can kind of move faster and whatnot. So 
we should be pretty prepared for it. I'll bring some overnight survival, safety gear, stuff like that. So the first couple miles of the drive here, we're driving through the White Mountains, just north of Fairbanks, and you gotta be really careful. It's really icy, really curvy, and there'll be just sharp curves out of nowhere. And the hills are really steep too, a lot of these. So we're doing good though. We're going about 40 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, just taking it easy. Also got this dash cam installed up here, so if anything happens this time, <laughs> I guess we'll have it on film, how about that? I had a lot of you guys comment and ask if I drive in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive most of the time, and I'm in two-wheel drive this entire drive. I try to stay in two-wheel drive pretty much all the time, even when it's snowy and icy. Really, the key to driving in two-wheel drive on the snow is just listening to your vehicle. You usually don't have the radio blasting, and you can hear if your tire is spinning or something, your RPMs will go up and your engine will get louder, so you just let off the throttle if your tires start spinning. And you just go easy in your steering, you don't swerve around, easy on your brakes, drive slow, slow down before the curves. All the basics, it's not rocket science. Oh, I didn't show you guys either, I fixed my CB radio in here. Looks like we get about 46 miles till the Dalton Highway. We're going down one of those steep icy hills right now just coming into it nice and slow that's where i almost freaking died on the way back to anchorage last time i was coming around off left hand turn just like this steep downhill and it, but i was going way faster like 50 and there was a truck blocking the entire road my entire lane and then an oncoming semi and i couldn't stop i was sliding right at him and i had to drive right in between both the semis because there's guardrails on both sides super sketchy so now i'm taking it easy around these turns just in case. Oh, look, a truck went through the guardrail right there. Holy crap. Woo. That'd be bad. That's why you go slow. There's the Tatalina River. Should be getting pretty close to the Dalton Highway, closing in on it. like we're gonna get into some really big drifts up in Attigan Pass again, but hopefully it won't be closed down this time. That was crazy last time. It's closed down for almost 48 hours. Whoa, you guys see that? There's a car back there that's been abandoned. There's no one in it. the Dalton Highway just turned to gravel here it looks like we are approaching the snowstorm it's just now starting to snow this is nice fog anymore so we'll see what happens we had that winter storm warning for tonight so hopefully it's not too crazy can't imagine it being any worse than that blizzard last time that was insane the last time I drove up here go this is the beginning of the Dalton Highway 425 miles let's do it holy crap someone went off the road right there what jeez That's why I was talking to the trucker there. I guess he saw my call for help the other night when I was uh, put a message out on social media trying to get a get this thing towed to place. Anyway, we're continuing on north. So those tracks I showed you guys that went off the hill into the ditch back there, I was like, whoa, a car went off. That's this truck freaking went off the road and he just winched it somehow up that hill and out of all the snow. Pretty wild. But anyway, we got uh, 175 miles to a uh, cold foot. 
probably spend the night around there because I'm going to leave this truck running. I'm not turning this truck off again. And uh, Coldfoot's the only place to get fuel. And uh, after that, uh, 250 miles to Dead Horse from Coldfoot. So that's the final push. Let's do it. She's running good. Can't believe that truck went off in the ditch. It's wild, man. We got him back in the road, though. Hey, look at that. Who is this guy anyway? James Dalton. The lifelong Alaskan Dalton was born in 1913, died in 77. So when my dad and I were staying in Wiseman, we were talking to, I can't remember who it was, I can't remember her name, it was a German lady that had like a little library in the town of Wiseman, just north of Coldfoot. And she was saying that the guy that made the Dalton Highway, I can't remember his name right now, I'm spacing it. Um, the government gave him an old bulldozer and a compass and the dude just took off heading north dragging a whole bunch of fuel behind him and somehow he's getting across rivers and all that kind of stuff i don't know how but he was a teenager at the time i guess he's 19 and just driving north and plowing the whole road and uh i guess the government would fly over him every now and then in planes and redirect him if he is getting off course and kind of help him scout out the best path around rivers and mountain passes and stuff but but that's what i was told i don't know if that's true or not probably have to look it up when i get service but uh Pretty cool. Back in the road again. I was just thinking, you see all these reality TV shows and stuff, and they're faking stuff half the time. And I don't know why. Like, all you have to do is go out and just live and do things, and stuff happens. It really does. So, hopefully, nothing else this trip. Woo, look at this hill. Sketchy, icy, sharp turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Here we go, we're going for it. Oh, we need to get some speed for this. Let's go, 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 go. That's a steep hill. Come on, old Bluis. That's what half the big semis do up here too. You get these big steep hills like this, so when you come down, when you're getting close to the base, you just gotta hammer it down, get some momentum so you don't spin out in the snow on the uphill. See some tracks right there where someone was starting to spin out. And like I was saying, I'm still in two wheel drive this whole time. So, usually, if you just keep your momentum going, you can get by in two wheel drive and all this. Now you guys want to see something crazy? I got frostbite. You see that little mark on my arm right there? That was when I was working on the truck yesterday, it touched metal for maybe 10 seconds or something like that, but I'm sure it'll heal up. It doesn't look super crazy. Now it looks like they halted construction on the bridge here. Put in a new bridge. Ooh, bouncy. Look at that crane, that is massive. The Sam that I built my house with this summer, my buddy, he had a crane in the back of an old truck, but that is a crane. Holy. Look at that thing. Woo. Pipeline right out there. Oh, it's like a cross on the highway there. What happened? Woo, it's a big one. <laughs> and when you get those big ones like that, you just gotta slow down and pull over, let them get by you. Those guys are, they're working, so they get the right away, you know? I'm the freaking tourist here. It's gonna be dark pretty soon, so I'm gonna hop out here. My off-road overhead lights are not working, so they need a new fuse. Probably blew a fuse, so let's go change that real quick. Well, that's really odd. The fuse looks good. Um, I just checked it's this fuse here. I went ahead and swapped it anyway. So, oh, no wonder it's on. <laughs> I've been on the negative side. Dang it. Uh, I'll just change that tonight. That sucks. I'm not going to shut the truck off in the middle of nowhere, though. When I was putting the new batteries in yesterday, I got the positive and the negative hooked up to the same side, so... That's why they're not firing up. It's all good, though. It's not dark yet, and I still have the other off-road lights, so... We're going to move on. Good time in that huge truck with the giant uh, tank on the back is, like, right behind me. Just barely beat him.
Hey, no way. These trucks are a uh, Black Gold Express, which is uh, Gary. He's the one that was helping me go back and forth with the truck that was wearing the fur hat. So that's the trunking company he works for. He's a mechanic for. That's crazy. Small world, man. Yeah, I just wanted to check out this abandoned car over here. Ooh, it's cold. It's windy up here. It's an old Dodge Durango. It's been there a while. Plowed in now. We get about 100 miles to go and we'll be in cold foot. We're getting there, chugging along. Here's the pipeline right here again, going under the road. Whew, man, it's been a rough road this time, I tell you what. It's not smooth, we've had an average speed of about 30 miles an hour this whole time. Hours and hours and hours of driving, it's about as fast as you wanna go in this stuff. It'll look smooth and then you'll just hit really rough chunks and you do not wanna be blowing tires or breaking things when it's this cold out. So, I'm trying to take it easy. Big hill. Go, 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 go. Uh, probably about one hour before dark, and I think we still have another 80 miles to Coldfoot or so. I'm already more than halfway to Coldfoot, so I am already past the point of no return. I think I've got to go now, at least up to Coldfoot, so we're committed at this point. Yeah, giving you some room. Pull over and let him buy really quick. And I'm blind. <laughs> that was cool. CB radio is working. I was wondering if it was working. I've got it on channel 19, which is uh, what they use up here on the road, as far as I know, to communicate between everyone. There's sub, there's other channels you can be on if you just want to talk to whoever, but uh, I think that's the one everyone kind of stays on. Uh, something's going on. Got a truck stopped in the middle of the road up here. Hopefully everything's all right. It's that big earth mover. Oh, it's a big hill up here. Hopefully no one's stuck. Looks like he was chaining up. Maybe to get up this hill up here, I guess. Woo! Mobbing. Well guys, I'm caving in. This road is getting so freaking rough. Um, I'm gonna, I didn't want to lower my air pressure, but I'm stopping, I'm freaking done. It's just getting too rough. Camper's getting too beat up. I'm like pretty much a top speed of 25 to ugh, 30 miles an hour and just been washboarded for probably 120 miles now. So I'm gonna let some air out of the tires and that'll be a lot easier in the truck too to absorb some of this. I'm gonna throw on the mucklucks here and go air these tires down, make this ride softer. It looks like it snowed a little bit here. It's probably three or four inches of snow is not much, but there's snow for sure. Oh yeah. He just threw some chains on. Come on out, little friend. Really careful with this plastic. This is pretty common practice when you off-road or do rock crawling, that kind of stuff. It just makes the ride a lot softer, it makes the tire more flexible. Usually, if, when you're in a lighter rig, you actually bring this down to like 20 pounds or so, but since this has a camper, I'm bringing it from 65 down to about 45, and uh, even that makes a huge difference. Here we go. Let's get the other side. We are all aired down. That should make a big difference. Uh, I had a bunch of you guys asking in the comments what tires I have on my truck. These are Toyo AT3s. Um, you can't really see right now, but they got all these sipes, all those little slits you can see. And that's where you get the traction from. They're starting to get a little worn down, but also have 35,000 miles on them just about. So I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I was. They're freaking expensive tires. But uh, they've been the best winter tire I've ever ran so far. So. 
I'm gonna get him again next year. That's my plan. All right, we are rolling again. It's starting to get dark. Let's see if that made a little bit of a difference. I hope it did. I do have an ARB air compressor, so I can pump up the tires whenever I want to. You can still feel the washboards, but it took like the violent shake out of it. Oh man, that is such a night and day difference. For those of you guys that don't do any off-roading or just rough riding on dirt roads or stuff like that, obviously it takes a while to air your tires down and air them back up. So you want the dirt road to be long enough, but next time you guys ride a long dirt road or something like that, try airing your tires down. You might thank me later. That truck that just passed me, he just called me in on channel 19. He was just catching up to me and asked if I could pull over so he could get around me. So he just went by and he said, there's one more coming. There it is right there. It's pretty sweet having a radio, but for whatever reason, I can't talk to him. The talking feature is not working, unfortunately, but. Now this ice fog's really bad. I'm gonna clean these off-road lights off. Here I can see again. Jeez, I don't wanna break the plastic. All right, we're back in business. Look at the ones up there, like totally frozen solid. Oh yeah, way better. Oh yeah, we're back in business. Sweet. Hey, you wanna see the difference these lights make? Watch this. Bam, pretty big difference. These are just the KC Slim lights I've got on here now. When we get to cold foot, I'm gonna hook my positive wire up for the overhead lights. We'll scrape off the ice in those, and those will be ready to rally tomorrow night for us. See all those potholes? That's why it's essential to have a good set of off-road lights. If you're gonna do enough off-roading at higher speeds like this, or just drive rough roads at high speeds, you need to be able to see those potholes coming. Cold foot, 71 miles. Dead horse, 311. Still got a long ways to go tonight. Finally starting to snow. We're supposed to be driving right into that storm tonight. It's supposed to roll in, so looks like this is the beginning of it. Oh yeah. Well guys, we're here at the beaver slide, so this is one of the longest, steepest downhills of the trip, so let's get on it. Woo. I've got it in a low gear right now. It's just pulling us down. You can only see so far. I wish I had my super bright overhead lights on. As you guys can see, I am out of diesel. <laughs> my tank's empty, but we have two tanks, so I'm gonna switch it over to the front tank. And you can watch my diesel go up right there. That's the sweet part about having two tanks like that. So now we're good to go for another 160 miles. Wow, here's the spot I hit the caribou, right here. And look at all these tracks I'm crossing. A whole bunch of caribou tracks you guys probably can't tell, but they're all off the side there. Hey, what do you know? It's the Arctic Circle. Hey. You guys think I'm in two wheel drive still? Come on, Lewis. Like a foot of snow. This truck's a beast, though, in two wheel drive. <laughs> cool. Nice. We have arrived. Oh, we're totally not there yet. A long ways to go. Ooh, the snow is deep. Keeps on snowing harder and harder. Sharp turn. Yeah. Pretty good bit of snow up here. We're up crossing the mountain pass just before pump station number five. Look at that truck's headlight up there just shining up in the sky. Oh boy. Yeah, bright. Crazy. It literally looks like a train is driving towards me. Look at these potholes. Ugh. Yeah! And one foot deep potholes in the road. Look how big that tank is. Holy crap, that's huge. Been playing leapfrog with these guys for a while. Well, guess what, everybody? We freaking made it to cold foot. Let's see what time it is. It's almost eight o'clock right now, so I've been driving about eight and a half hours total. I was stopping to film a little bit too, obviously. Cold foot road. So what I'm gonna do right now is fill the truck up with diesel and bolt the tanks all the way to the top. That way, while it's idling all night, I'll know exactly how much diesel it uses to idle all night. All right, here we are. It's not as crazy as the last time I was up here. Adigan Pass, which is not too far from here, was shut down from avalanches last time, so a ton of trucks were here. 
not quite as crazy today. We'll go fill up up here and find ourselves a camping spot for the night. Ooh, man, yeah, I'm tired. I mean, I obviously didn't get much sleep last night. It was super hot inside that salt processing plant. And then I also woke up at whatever it was, 4.15 in the morning, to start getting the truck ready to start. Looks like diesel is uh, $7.49 a gallon. I'm going to go get my credit card. Yeah, man. Yeah, you guys had quite the load coming up. That's, that's a pretty big tank coming up. $7.50 a gallon. <laughs> the diesel's not cheap up here. We're gonna put some anti-winter gel in there tonight. so nice having a couple different diesel tanks in this thing. You guys ready for the grand total? Write in the comments what you think the total is going to be. $142 for 19 gallons. Back in the rear tank. I'm going to put some anti-gel in there just to be safe tonight. That's the stuff I use to keep it from freezing under time. Let's go pay these guys. Might get a freaking cheeseburger while I'm in here. Cook sounds good. Get all the snow stacked up around the door from driving. Open this heater up a little bit more and get it nice and toasty in here. Yeah, that'd be a, yeah, just do like bacon cheeseburger if y'all can do that. Sure. Yeah, I was gonna do a can of chili. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. I just grabbed a go, it's fine. Go find ourselves a spot to idle all night. <laughs> Break it away from people so I'm a little less obnoxious. All right, here we go. She's in park. Probably put it down to the stock tune all night on the hydro chip here. That's pretty much it. Some of these rigs, wild. This is home tonight. I'm just gonna leave it running all night. Old cold foot camp. So snowy. So we're just leaving this thing running. Alrighty. Well, there we go. We're home for the night. <laughs> Temperature back here is 64 degrees and warming up to 70, so not bad at all, my friends. Not bad at all. Get our cozy clothes on. Probably not gonna start a fire in the parking lot because I don't know. There's Trucks running all over the place and the gas station right there. So we don't need one night that will just keep the diesel heater going. But I tell you what, we're absolutely having a fire tomorrow night. Everything looks pretty good back here. If we're getting tossed all crazy hard in the highway. Not too insane looking. Oh yeah. Nice. Don't mind if I do. I picked up some postcards for the family here, so I'll write those tonight. Also need to, uh, my cameras are all full. The camera you guys are watching on, I only have like 10 minutes left in that card, maybe less. So I need to offload that onto my computer tonight. Check this out, got a cool little cold foot camp magnet. <laughs> have your own magnets in there. It's kind of fun to have the magnet on the wood stove there, so that's where it's gonna live. I think what I'm gonna do is bust out the old laptop here and uh, I'm gonna offload all the footage 
on that camera that you guys are watching in right now in front of my laptop. That way I have room to film more footage. I think I've already taken like six to seven hours of footage easily. It's a lot of work editing all this stuff, I'll tell you what. Hopefully I have enough room slash memory on this. Let's see what we got. Ugh, 765 gigabytes left, not a ton. All this camera footage takes up a ton of space. Anyway, I'm going to eat this delicious bacon cheeseburger, which is sliding off my bun. Eat these tater tots. I'm gonna offload this footage, which is gonna take an hour or two, but I'll have a bite of this exploding burger first. Mmm. Colfo Camp. Definitely get a bacon cheeseburger. All right, see you guys in a bit. It is time to get some sleep. It's about midnight, and I gotta get an early start tomorrow. I've answered this a couple times in the comments. This place is packed with stuff right now. This entire camper can turn into a bed, or you can have two separate couch beds, or just one full-size bed, or uh, usually what I'll do is I'll just pull this bed out a little bit, and then there's plenty enough space to spread out. It's kind of like almost like a twin size mattress when you do that. So if I don't fold the back cushion down, it's still like a twin size bed here. And I can still walk and stand right here in the center to get in and out. So that's why I usually pull it just halfway out. Truck is still running. I'm just gonna leave it running all night, I guess. Never done that ever. And tomorrow night and the next night, literally just gonna run the truck for, I don't even know how many days. This mattress is super comfortable. It's uh, two different styles of memory foam, about six inches thick, and uh, yeah, just super cozy. Anyhow, I'll catch you guys in the morning.